Today I'm going to be reacting to the differences between the Filipino and Indonesian language. This particular video was recommended to me by Gabriela Malaya. The most popular selection for my server was the Tagalog word challenge which I will be doing in the future but under that comment Gabriela was kind enough to send me a video of Indonesian versus Filipino language and she said that it would be able to help me a lot with learning Tagalog so I'm going to be checking that out because I want to get fluent in Tagalog Fest. I don't really know how much this is gonna apply to me because I don't even know many of the differences but you know what a reaction's a reaction I'm gonna try my best and we will get into that soon. All right guys screen record is on I'm going to begin this reaction in three two one Let's begin, this guys. This video is brought to you by Innovative Language, the creators of Indonesian Pod 101 and Filipino Pod 101. Hold on, wait. The link can, the I, to can I learn Tagalog through this? Video lessons for students of all levels. Oh, Hello, snap. Everyone. Hold Welcome on. The I need that. Channel, and my name is Paul. Today, we're going to compare Tagalog otherwise known as Filipino, the lingua franca of the Philippines, and Indonesian, the lingua franca of Indonesia, the most widely spoken variety of Malay. Basically, everything oh, okay. I say about so that's Indonesian what it's called. in this video will also apply to Malay, because their standard forms are very close to each other, aside from some different vocabulary. But since I'm more familiar with Indonesian, the samples in this video will focus on Indonesian. Tagalog on the one hand and Indonesian and other forms of Malay on the other. I didn't other know it was called Malay. Mutually intelligible, but native speakers of either language often say that they feel they should be able to understand the other language, but they can't. I don't get that. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. So I don't know Tagalog or Indonesian, but I actually do know little bits of Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, demonstrations of Portuguese. Prazer conhecer você, meu nome é Seis, muito, muito obrigado. So, I know that with Portuguese, yeah, it sounds like Spanish, but it isn't. So, when I would learn stuff with Spanish, there was just certain things that I noticed where they, for like, for example, with A, it would be like un instead of um for Portuguese, and... Those are just some things that I noticed with Spanish and Portuguese. But the thing is with Spanish Portuguese, I was able to at least understand bits and pieces of it and kind of piece together um, kind of what the word would mean. But with this, it's gonna be really interesting because I wonder if it's gonna be that same type of parallel with Spanish and Portuguese. So uh, yeah, let's just get back into the video and see that. And intonation. And they might also hear some similar words in the other language, partly because of the common origins of the two languages. Malay, including Indonesian, since they're essentially the same language, and Tagalog, are both members of the Malayo-Polynesian branch of the Austronesian language family. That means they developed from the same language, Proto-Malayo-Polynesian, from which all members of that branch descended. Speakers of Proto-Malayo-Polynesian first migrated from Taiwan to northern Luzon in the Philippines before spreading out across much of maritime Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Most of the languages of Philippines and most of the languages of Malaysia and Indonesia, outside of Papua that is, also Where's descended Papua? from Proto-Malayo-Polynesian. So at their core, Malay and Tagalog are related. Oh, so I am Polynesian. from each other for at least 4,000 years and maybe much longer. During that time, they've developed their own features and have undergone different influences. Influences on Malay. Sanskrit had a heavy influence on Malay vocabulary and literature, beginning in the 7th century, followed by Arabic in the 14th century, once Islam was established in the archipelago. Later on, Malay was influenced by English in British colonial territories and Dutch in the Dutch colonial oh, territories. Oh, what the heck? Modern Dutch? Indonesian, That's so interesting. Which called Indonesian only in 1928, contains more Dutch influence, while Malay Whoa, and Malaysia Whoa, I didn't know how had Dutch influence with it. Influence. Influences on Tagalog. One of the major American, like Spanish, right? Tagalog was actually Malay, which served as oh. lingua franca throughout maritime Southeast Asia. For it's got to be Spanish so in here, though, right? Some of the similarities between Malay and Tagalog stem from their ancient common origin, and some of their similarities stem from the more recent influence of Malay on Tagalog. Then the Spanish arrived. There we go. I got that right because my mom is from Bicol. Print on Tagalog and other Filipino languages. What percentage of Tagalog words come from Spanish? Estimates range from 20% to 33%. This definitely oh, accounts. Oh, 
Whoa, hold on. Wait a second. That's a good amount of... Huh. I didn't realize that Tagalog took that much from Spanish. I didn't know it was like a third of the vocabulary. Huh. Why did I not notice that? So the reason why I'm kind of like this is because I actually took Spanish in high school. I was actually a grade above the grade I was supposed to be in usually with that. I, I didn't really retain that as much, but I've been using Duolingo every now and then to kind of just brush up on Spanish a bit more. And I understand the language decently. I understand it much better than Tagalog. So I'm kind of wondering what words use the Spanish dialect. And I feel like I'd be able to understand those words a bit easier. Let's get back into this reaction though. For a lot of the difference in vocabulary between Tagalog and Malay and Indonesian, the Philippines also became a colony of the United States for several decades, beginning in 1898. And as a result, oh, well, I'm fluent in English, but in Tagalog, huh. has many borrowings from English. Since I'm focusing on Indonesian for the samples, I'm simply going to refer to it as Indonesian from now on, rather than saying Indonesian and Malay all the time. Generally speaking, Indonesian Sounds good to and me, Tagalog dude. are fairly different in terms of grammar and sentence structure. In terms of pronunciation, they're quite similar. Stop consonants in both Indonesian and Tagalog are unaspirated. Meaning what does that mean? There's no puff of air oh. after the consonant the way there often is after p, t, and k in English. They both How do you also do that? V and f sounds, except for a small number of loan words, but many speakers will pronounce them as b and p. They also but, have similar sets of but, vowels. Tagalog t has five. A, a, e, a, I, o, u. And Indonesian has five vowel letters, but with six sounds because E is pronounced two ways, either as E or as a schwa, uh. In terms of vocabulary, the majority <laughs> of words are different, but there are also many similar words, including many common basic core words. For example, Man, some tired. personal pronouns and family vocabulary are similar. The words for I, aku, ako, oh, you, singular, Nka, oh, kau, ikau, ka, we, kami, kami, kita, kita, in Indonesia, Kita. this is we, Kami. including the listener. Kami. And in Tagalog, so it is similar to Portuguese and Spanish, and where some things are just slightly together. different. Child. Anak. 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 Lelaki. Laki laki. Lelaki. Lelaki. There are also numerous words related to household <laughs> and everyday life. I'm like butchering every single Mangkok. word, aren't I? Mangkok. Mangkok. Mosquito net. Kalambu. Kulambo. Kulambo. Notice that oftentimes when huh. there's an U sound in one language, there will be an Mango. O sound in the other. Kulambo. Door. Pintu. Pinto. Pintuan. Table. Meja. Mesa. The Tagalog oh, word that is Spanish. Spanish. Oh, interesting. They also say La Mesa. The Indonesian and Malay word is also a loan from Portuguese, Mesa. Ladle. Sandok. Sandok. And in Malay and Indonesian, this also means spoon. Nature words. Rock or stone. Batu. Bato. Wind. Angin. Hangin. Sky. Oh. Langit. Langit. Fire. Api. Apoi. You'll notice that Thought I saw something the outside that scared me. Malay and Indonesian sometimes corresponds to Apoi? Tagalog. Pig. Babi. Baboy. Babo wait, wait, Boy. what? Wait. <laughs> wait. A baboy is pig? Huh. Okay. So, in kind of my school the college I studied at, there was this thing called, or this group, they call themselves Baboy to Men. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. That probably just means like boys to men, but like boys Filipino. I didn't realize they were calling themselves pigs and then becoming men, which is weird. Why would you do that? That's like so low, so, oh, well, wow. that's like so low self-esteem, dude. Huh. Well, Let's get back into this reaction. Yeah. Sorry if I'm pausing a lot, guys, by the way. Um, moon or I just have a lot to say about this video because it's just super helpful. Lingo. The Tagalog word comes from the Malay word. Lingo. And the Malay word is from Portuguese, Domingo. Mm -hmm. Year. Tahun. Taon. Four. Empat. Apat. Apat. Five. Lima. Lima. Six. Enam. Anin. Thousand. Ribu. Libo. Parts of the body. Eye, mata, mata, face, muka, muka, brain, otak, utak, 
basic hmm. states and emotions. Hope. Asa. Asa. Sick or sickness. Sakit. Sakit. Delicious. Sedap. Sarap. Oh, Tagalog, this is the most that makes sense. Word you see in advertisements and so on. Yeah, I, I do see sarap a lot. Is more common. To be afraid. Takut. 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 Tawa. 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 Selamat. Safety. Selamat. In Tagalog, its basic meaning is thank you. Whereas in Malay and Indonesian, it's often huh. used in greetings like selamat pagi, meaning good morning. That's so weird. Other basic verbs. Huh. To read. Baca. Basa. Enter. Masuk. Pasok. It's worth pointing out that m and p are both bilabial sounds. They are both articulated with your lips together. So it would be easy for one sound to gradually change into the other. To drink. Minum. Inom. To open. Buka. Buka. To help. Tolong. Tulong. Hmm. Is that old laptop still trying to boot up? Ad. It's switching time. To a Chromebook that boots up fast. I really should get some ad blockers. I think I might just cut this out. But yeah. To Chromebook. Yeah, I think I'll just cut that out. Of course, I've been intentionally pointing out words that are similar, but I want to be clear that most words are not the same. So let's look at some sentences in either language so that we can compare their sentence structures, but we can also see a more representative sample of their vocabulary in general. These sentences mean my child likes cats. First in Indonesian, anakku suka kucing. Word for word, it's well, so child like, my like cats. And well, Tagalog, so like Tagalog, ako. Ang anak ko sa mga pusa. Wait, ko? So what is ko? Is that just like a? Child, my, two, oh, marker, oh my god! Oh my, oh my god! Wow, this is the video I needed, Gabriella. Holy snap! Child, anak. Okay, ko. I thought ko is just a placeholder. Is that po? Similar. Anakku. Mahili. Anakko. But we could change this word here. Pusa. Plural. To kuting. Which means kitten. Oh. And the sentences would be even more similar. We can see that Indonesian is basically SVO at its core. Ang. S Wait, Ang is focus? Tagalog I feel like Ang has multiple meanings, no? But another way to think of it is as predicate subject. Because it's not always a verb in this position. In fact, this word here, mahili is not actually a verb, it's an adjective, meaning fond of. But a verb would appear here in the same position. Basically, these two pieces of the sentence are reversed in Indonesian and Tagalog. That's the more common and natural word order in Tagalog, but there's also an inverted word order that's more similar to Indonesian, but is generally considered less natural and is used less often. Ang anak ko ay mahilig sa mga kuting. The subject here, ang anak ko, comes at the beginning, followed by the inversion marker, ay followed by the predicate. This is less common and more formal, but probably more intuitive for an Indonesian speaker. And so verb, well. subject, so the object. This word that the Indonesian sentence doesn't have. Ang, a focus marker. This comes before the focus. Oh, of the it's sentence, a focus it's marker. A okay. Object. Another thing the Indonesian sentence doesn't have is a plural marker like menga. In Indonesian, menga. the plural can be shown with reduplication like kucing kucing. But it's not always used. Of okay. course, Indonesian also lacks an inversion marker, like the word I in Tagalog. In general, Tagalog features more little function words and particles than Indonesian does, especially standard Indonesian. Colloquial Indonesian has some more little words like that. Verbs. One difference between Indonesian and Tagalog verbs is that in Indonesian, they have no conjugations for tense or aspect. So it goes verb, Tagalog subject, verbs object for, for aspect, Tagalog. Though neither language has different conjugations for person and number. Let's look at a quick example with Indonesian masuk and Tagalog pasok, meaning enter. These sentences mean he entered the school. In Indonesian, dia masuk ke sekolah. And in Tagalog, pumasok siya sa eskwelahan. In the Tagalog verb, there's an infix, um, which is used for completed actions. But there's nothing like that in the Indonesian verb. If we want to talk about an action that's happening now, like he's entering the school, it's like this. In Indonesian, dia sedang masuk ke sekolah. And in Tagalog, pumapasok siya sa eskwelahan. If we want to talk about an action that hasn't happened yet, like he will enter the school, it's like this. In Indonesian, dia akan masuk ke sekolah. And in Tagalog, papasok siya sa eskwelahan. Notice that in Indonesian, the verb itself okay. doesn't change, he, but rather an aspect sa, marker tu, comes before the verb, and it may be eskwela, left out of the context clear already. In Tagalog, the verb itself is inflected differently. 
You may also notice that some of the Tagalog inflections are infixes. In the first case, um, and in the second case, there's a doubling of the first syllable followed by the infixing of um. Indonesian verbs do not have infixes. There are numerous prefixes and suffixes which change the meaning of the verb in different ways, for example, by making it transitive or causative or passive, but there's nothing for tense or aspect. Actor focus and patient Whoa, focus. Oh, what the heck? Tagalog Inflexes? Actor focus why why is that a thing? Focus. That means they have different conjugations depending on whether the focus of the sentence is on the doer of the action or the receiver of the action. For example, the student read a science book. Bumasa ang estudyante ng libro sa agham. This is actor focus. So the focus is on the student, the doer of the action. Binasa ng estudyante ang libro sa agham. A student read so, a science book. So verb, this subject, object. Focus. So the focus is on libro, the receiver of the action. You can see that the verb inflections that are infixed to the root are different for actor focus and patient focus. You can also see that there are two words that are switched in either sentence, ang and nang. Ang is the in-focus marker, and nang is the out-of-focus marker. As a quick side note, I should point out that the noun with the in-focus marker, ang and nang. Oh, so nang, nang is, is out-of-focus. Oh my god. No, wait, what? It's that... That's how you do ang and nang? Dude, wait, what? So ang means that the thing following it is going to be the focus part and nang out. Oh my god. As a quick side note, I should point out Wait. that the noun with the in-focus wow. marker, ang, is often interpreted as definite, whereas the noun with the out-of-focus marker is so often the interpreted student as indefinite. Read a, oh but my god. This can be oh. by adding additional Dude. words like isang. This is making one. sense now. And it can also I need to watch this video again like outside of this reaction honestly. Mentioned. Indonesian doesn't exactly have actor focus and patient focus like Tagalog does. It does have something similar but simpler, a distinction between subject focus and object focus. Subject focus is the basic type of sentence, like this sentence meaning a student read a science book. Mahasiswa membaca buku sains. Technically, Indonesian has no definite or indefinite articles, so the nouns here could also be considered definite, but we could more explicitly express definiteness by adding nya which means it's, to either noun or to both. Mahasiswanya membaca buku sainsnya. Or you could huh. use the demonstrative pronoun itu, meaning that. Object focus usually places the object first. Buku sains dibaca mahasiswanya. A science book was read by the student. Alternatively, this could be Buku sains yang dibaca mahasiswanya. A science book is what the student read. Notice that in Indonesian, there are no markers that show focus or lack of focus, like there are in Tagalog. We usually know whether it's subject focus or object focus based on which one comes first. In an object focus sentence in the third person, the prefix D attaches to the verb. Hmm. But in the first and second person, any prefix is dropped from the verb. Buku sains yang saya baca. I'm going to be honest, I'm not really retaining any of the differences Notice right now. I think I'm just so caught up on the... Have its usual prefix, the Tagalog the stuff that I'm actually focus, learning in this video. It doesn't have the prefix D because that's only for third person. In Tagalog, all the personal pronouns are different depending on whether they are in focus or out of focus. The oh out my of focus ones are wait. actually genitive pronouns because they're also used as possessives. Wow. In Indonesian, huh. most personal pronouns are the same regardless of whether they are the focus of the sentence or not. As you can probably see, Tagalog on the one hand and Indonesian and Malay on the other clearly have some similar features that show that they are related, such as yeah. similar pronunciation and similar core basic vocabulary. But it's also obvious that they have diverged so much that they are not mutually intelligible with each other, partly okay. because of their different sentence structure and partly because of their largely different vocabulary. So it's it is kind of similar to Portuguese Spanish a bit. language of the Philippines and that there are many languages spoken in Indonesia and Malay speaking countries like Malaysia and Brunei as well. Tagalog and Malay and Indonesian are not necessarily the two most similar languages from those countries. The question of the day for speakers of Tagalog and Malay and Indonesia. Okay, I'm going to nail this well question. Do you understand speakers of the other language? Um, do you understand anything? Do you recognize some words when you hear the other language? Let us know in the comments down below.
If you're interested in learning Indonesian or Filipino, I recommend you click the link in the description to check out Indonesian Pod 101 or Filipino Pod 101. Oh, snap! They have hundreds of audio and video lessons. Yo, wait, please be free. Please be free. Please be free. I'm, I'm a broke boy. Oh my gosh, please. And a special thanks goes please, out please, to please, my please, Patreon please. supporters, especially these ones right here on the screen. They are my top tier Patreon supporters. And that's why they're in the video. So many special thanks to them. And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Wow, that is so helpful. Oh my gosh. All right, let's stop the recording. All right, first of all, Gabriella, you really come in clutch with your reactions, honestly. Like, you have been here by my side back when I had 30 subscribers. She's the one that actually recommended Fly Like a Bird more set, which kind of began to build the hype for this YouTube channel. I'm like actually kind of retaining some of the changes with Tagalog language. It's just really cool. In terms of the Tagalog and Indonesian differences, it really does remind me of the differences between Spanish and Portuguese just a little bit. Both have like the same kind of word structures, but there's like a lot of differences in terms of just how you use certain words and the way you pronounce certain things. Anyways, that was probably a lot for you guys to watch. If for some reason you stuck to the end watching this video, I appreciate you guys so much. Like if you guys stick to watching 20 minutes of just me in awe of things that you guys probably just straight up know already. I appreciate that so much and appreciate your support and viewership. So thank you so much. Anyways, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on what you would like to see me react to next, what you would like to see me cook or any type of new Filipino content videos. I am honestly up for it. So thank you so much. Take care and hope you have a nice night. Peace.